I'm Dr. Sophia Chang, Director of the Better Chronic Disease Care Program at the California Healthcare Foundation. In our state, 38% of Californians live with at least one chronic medical condition. And research shows that these patients receive recommended care only about half the time. This leads to avoidable complications, a decline in quality of life, and an increase in costs. Chronic disease management systems, or registries, can help. They enable clinicians to make sure that all their patients are getting proper care, they can track the progress of high-risk patients, and they can identify needed follow-up services. Of course, a registry is only as effective as the provider's willingness to use it. But when used in a clinic or practice that embraces data-driven quality improvement, by clinicians who are focused on providing recommended care for all of their patients, it is a powerful tool that can drive significant change and improve the health of the patients they serve. This short video shows how clinicians are discovering the power of disease registries. I promise you that the work involved in seeing patients day to day, we can't find enough ways to make that more efficient because the paper and pencil ways of trying to track that and then to try to manage a population is just impossible. I'm really a strong believer that we can provide more efficient health care for the entire population and I believe that means using information technology solutions. And as much as we can help give the providers the tools that they need, the, the information that they need at the point of care, then we can help them do their job better. When we first signed on, it was kind of an experimental thing. We didn't really know exactly what we were getting into. The momentum kept building as more people learned about what the registry could do. It's definitely become an integral part of our care now. I'm the chief medical officer of the countywide IPA. My job is to oversee quality and performance countywide. And what we've been able to achieve with the registry being the centerpiece is dramatic improvement to the point where the care for patients with diabetes in Humboldt County is essentially unmatched anywhere in the country. In the chronic care model, the end result you're seeking is a productive interaction between an activated, informed patient and a prepared practice team. And the registry is an immediate, very accessible tool to measure and improve and include the patients in the loop. Our patients oftentimes have so many other things going on in their life that their health care may be very low on their list of priorities. And having the support of the registry to call people in and keep the awareness of where they are in managing their own chronic illness is really important these old first-generation registries, the people who are going to be treating the patients, it shifted a lot of the burden, a lot of their time into actually doing manual data entry instead of actually caring for the patients and running reports and calling patients in to get care. The newer generation of registries automates the process of getting data and loading it into their registry. We can look at our population of diabetics and we can ask ourselves, what percentage of our diabetic patients have their lipid levels controlled? What percentage haven't even had a cholesterol test yet? What percentage need eye exams? What percentage do we need to screen for depression? We are much better in our proactive management than we ever were. Because previously, once a patient left the clinic, their chart went back to file and we had no way of knowing that they were falling behind in their care other than maybe a provider's memory with 850 patients <laughs> can, be, can be tapped out at some point. We all agree there are certain things that diabetics need at certain intervals, lab tests, other kinds of investigations, certain kind of medications, and it's hard to remember them all. The heartbreaking examples are seeing a person regularly and not noticing that you hadn't done a test and then doing it and it's very abnormal and you always meant to do it. And those are the things that keep doctors up at night. Um, and not having that happen because this simple, reliable checklist is there that, that doesn't let me forget. Because the doctors have a better picture of what's happening to their patients and those patients that are out of control, there's a much higher chance that they are going to be reaching out to the patients who are at risk. Yeah. Any big problems for today? Um, no. I'm having trouble eating regularly, though. If the patient's here for a diabetic visit specifically, and if they're interested and motivated to find out, 
I can go into this registry and I can show them a graph of the A1C levels or of their blood pressure or of their weight or things. And some patients really respond to that. I think that the visual tool is really helpful and I can say, look, we've gotten you to stop smoking. You're on these medications, you're taking your aspirin, but you still haven't gotten your eye exam. You know, it's revolutionary from the standpoint that we can look at our population and then actually act on the data that we have to try to make changes. And then when we don't see a change, we can act again. We can do more proactive management that way to try to find where we can actually impact the care we give. Rodrigo, why don't we bring up this chart and see if we can go over it together and enter the data we need for today. Okay. To ask clinicians to do things differently, there has to be a business case. And the business case that's coming along right now is pay for performance. Pay for performance is a system where rather than just getting paid for quantity of work, how many patients did you see, you're actually being paid a portion of the money to do the right things. If you are paying your physicians and your clinics on a series of measures and you set high standards, then the clinics and practices are going to very quickly realize that they need tools like registries in order to meet those high standards and they'll make those investments and then they'll be rewarded for it. No matter what somebody believes about the potential for IT solutions in healthcare, there's work involved. And it takes work and creativity and time to get it to work for you. But the end result then is a more efficient healthcare. And it is night and day, and I'm very thankful for the functionality that it offers. The registry really helps you come together so that everyone's on the same page as far as how you're providing care. I don't know any health center that would go back to pre-registry days. Chronic disease is the thing that's going to break the bank. This is the single most important issue faced in the United States from a healthcare perspective economically. So I think the top priority in healthcare now has to be chronic disease. And I think tools like the registry and, and the changes in the nature of practice that a tool like that helps bring about are the answer. And we know what works. The issue is how do we spread that widely and get everybody doing it effectively. And we don't have much time.